Hey everybody, this is Sean here. This will be a quick video, just kind of showing off a project that I've started. Um, if any of you are familiar with this project, that's cool, but if you're not, this is the AM8 3D printer. Now what this is, is this is where you take an ANET A8 3D printer and you put it on an aluminum extrusion frame rather than the acrylic frame. Now I've got a lot of work to go. As you can see, I've kind of broken some of my 3D printed parts here. They're still structurally sound, but I need to update these parts with non-broken parts. I need to make the belt tensioner work a little better. Uh, there's still a few things I have left to do. Uh, one of the things I actually did was I swapped out the stock 20 amp power supply with an ATX power supply that's powering a Raspberry Pi running OctoPi and the Clipper firmware. I'm using the uh, LCD12864 screen. And over here on my electronics side, I'm using my I'm using an MKS Gen 1.4. This is an awesome motherboard. I uh, actually just recently, like today, ran into a problem where my my um, extruder motor here is not running properly. So I'm gonna swap that motor. I swapped out the um, DRV8825 uh, stepper driver, and the motor is still like this. It's not. It's not sticking to the direction. With the ATX supply, I know that I can do the power on pin on the board. I've chosen not to do that and I've wired the ATX supply to come on the second I flip the switch. So just to kind of show that this is working and I'm able to power the Raspberry Pi and the other uh, and the board off of the supply. I'm gonna flip on the ATX power supply. I'm using an Ultra LSP450 supply. It has 323 watts, basically 33 amps. I think it's 33 amps. It has 33 amps on the 12 volt rail. So this actually is a nice upgrade. You power up the printer. You can see the pies come up and all that. I also have an RJ45 Ethernet cable coming out. This is a Pi 3, so this is Wi Fi. So if I wanted to, I could run the printer from Wi Fi. And there it is, started up. It is giving it sign on message. And just to show that this is working, I will do a Again, this is the Clipper firmware. I'm not sure why the red light on the Raspberry Pi is blinking. Uh, I can only attest that maybe it's complaining about the 5 volt power I'm using, but it is working. Uh, I'm looking, I'm not getting any power errors or anything like that. Um, I'll show that the fan runs. Turn the fan off. We'll disable the steppers. And last but not least, I'll power down the printer. So this is right now where I'm at with the printer. Uh, I've been running the stock supply and doing some prints to kind of mount up the Raspberry Pi and all that. Now my print quality still isn't 100%, but it certainly is better than where it was originally with the acrylic frame. Uh, not dogging the acrylic frame at all. In fact, uh, I ran this printer on an acrylic frame for about a year. But I'm so much happier with the with the aluminum frame. It makes the it adds a whole new level of sturdy to the machine that the acrylic frame just couldn't provide. So I'm actually very, very happy with the AM8 on uh, you know the aluminum extrusion. I'm just ecstatically happy with this machine now. I love the way this thing's coming out. Um, I'm gonna mount the ATX supply to the um, to the chassis here. As you can see, I did indeed mount the Raspberry Pi to the chassis, and this is working out really well. Um, I've upgraded from the SNL4 sensor to a BL Touch sensor. Again, this is one of my recommended upgrades. Just. Stop fooling with the ANET sensor and go to the BL Touch. You will find a much more pleasant experience with the BL Touch. Um, outside of all that, um, that's just about it. Again, the ATX supply. This is an ultra. This is an older ultra supply. 
Uh, one of the things I actually did here is, as you can see, there's not a lot of wire coming out of the supply because I actually went in and cut out all the wires except for the power supply on, a ground for that, and grounds and 12 volts. Uh, I've quadrupled up here, as you can see, I'm using four 12 volt wires to the one coming into the printer. That's just to make sure I have ample current carrying capacity to carry power to the 3D printer. Most people only use one or two. I'm using four, each his own, tomato, tomato. That's your pick. But yeah, I'm super happy with the AM8 here. Um, I've still got a long way to go with this build. Uh, definitely need to replace some of the 3D printed parts that I broke. But outside of that, you're just looking for a low cost way to make a, make this 3D printer better. I highly recommend the AM8. Now this definitely, I'm you know, I'm trying for ways to kind of make this thing closer to an Ender 3, but this is never going to be an Ender 3. Yeah, I will probably end up at one point in life buying an Ender 3 because I really want an Ender 3. Uh, those are just awesome 3D printers, but I can save a little bit of time and money now, build this printer up to where I really want it, and then buy an Ender 3 later. So, I highly recommend this 3D printer. I've been really happy with this particular build out. So, if you're looking for a cheap way just to kind of revive your ANET A8, this is the way to do it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave comments down in the description if you have them.